In last week's video, we talked about how to pick the right template for your business in version 7.1 of Squarespace. But wondering how to customize your template's fonts, colors, and buttons to be a little bit more on brand? Whether you're a newbie DIYer or an experienced Squarespace designer left kind of scratching your head by the recent updates to the platform, this video series will have you quickly and easily customizing your site using the built-in site styles editor. By the way, this is a two-part series specifically on Squarespace 7.1, so if you're looking for help with Squarespace 7.0, you can watch my complete guide to the 7.0 site styles here, and I'll also pop that in the description below. For the best Squarespace tips and site building best practices, subscribe to my channel and be sure to hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every single Thursday. Okie doke, so what are site styles? Site styles are the settings used to tell Squarespace exactly how to display your content. So when you first go to plug in your images and your copy, that means your website words and your buttons and your links, these will automatically take on whatever the default style settings that come with the template you picked. Swapping out the default fonts and colors and buttons is what keeps your site looking unicorn status unique and nothing at all cookie cutter like the template that you picked or like your competition's websites. So how do you change them? There are two main ways to make changes to your site styles. First, globally in your site styles editor. Your site style editor settings all live in your site's design panel and any changes you make here will affect the specific design element you're editing site-wide. So if you change your button font here, button fonts everywhere on your site will now follow. Next is to edit your site styles locally in the on page section editor. These settings will look different depending on the type of content you're editing, but it can be found by clicking edit to style icon. Any changes you make here are only applied locally or to that one section or bit of content. Before you start dragging and dropping your content and messing with your template site styles, it's important to know there's a bit of an order in which to change things. You want to start with your global changes or the site style editor. Think of it like renovating a home. Before you can start the actual makeover process, you have to decide the overall aesthetic you're going for and therefore the types of materials or finishes you will use to get the job done. The site style editor is the store where you shop for all the materials you need to create your design. The decisions you make here decide the overall consistent theme for your home. Now that you've handpicked your custom finishes, it's time to decide throughout your home where to use them. This is where your on-page editing comes in. When you click on the style icon and make changes to your settings sections, you are telling Squarespace which colors from your overall palette will get applied to one room. You can swap out those paint color options as much as you like, but if you decide you want to change your general color palette, you're going to need to return to the paint store, aka your site styles editor. So the global editor is used to set all the site styles you plan to use across your site, and the section settings are only used to apply those styles. Now let's look at what you can actually customize starting at the global or site-wide level. We're going to focus on the three main elements that will have the biggest impact on the look and feel of your site. Your fonts, colors, and buttons. Let's start with fonts. It's important to note that Squarespace will only give you options for styling what's currently on your site, so it's helpful to add one of every element or content type that you plan to set your site styles for. Doing it all on one page like this allows you to view the changes you are making in real time, seeing how they look compared to the other elements you'll use around your site. So here I've typed out a little example labels to show all the different font styles that will be available to me when designing my site. These are just the regular words typed into a text block to which I've then assigned the appropriate font style. Again, Squarespace can't offer options for customizing what isn't there, so I had to go in and create small snippet of text using each type of font formatting Squarespace offers first. Don't forget to include a regular old link as well so Squarespace knows what to do when you link something in your text. I've also added three buttons, a small, medium, and large, each one labeled so I remember which is which when deciding my site styles. By the way, you'll want to keep this mood board page handy for part two of the series where we talk about setting your site's color themes and remaining button styles as well. So first things first, let's head under our design panel to the font style editor. You'll see that Squarespace comes loaded with tons of ready-to-use font packs. These are pre-packaged font pairings created by their brilliant design team to help you quickly and easily choose fonts that pair well together. But if you don't see one you love, no worries. You can handpick your pairings by clicking on any one of these font packs, pressing save, and then scrolling below the pack to see your options for customization. Within each font pack, you have three main groups of fonts you'll be styling. Your headings, what you use to add titles, section headers, or big standout words on your site. Your paragraphs are the font used to write the body text of your website and your buttons. 
Within each group of font, you'll find the options for adjusting your font family, the fun is part of the font shopping, your font weight, this decides how bold or thin your font will be, your font style, most font families offer normal or italicized as options, your line spacing, which affects how much white space you'll have between each line or letter, and text transform, which allows you to write in all caps or lowercase all the time. Just remember that you can adjust a lot of these things by using your text block toolbar, like bolding or italicizing words you want to stand out, or simply by typing with your caps lock on, and sometimes leaving these settings more with the defaults will actually give you more room to play with the font when you go to write on your page. Squarespace knows how important brand consistency is, and having too many different fonts can overwhelm visitors and massively slow down your site speed, which isn't great for SEO. So in Squarespace 7.1, any changes you make here in the header panel will apply to all of your headings. Instead of different fonts for each heading, you'd use the size sliders below to differentiate one from the next. If you return to your font panel, you can also increase or decrease the size of all fonts with one click using the plus or minus button beside base size. You have a few more options here under miscellaneous and assign that help you have more control over the text that comes built into your site and was not added using a text block on the page. So if you're trying to tweak the style of your site title font or the fonts that are built into your blog or shop, chances are you'll find those options in here. The easiest way to find your options for customizing a certain element is to make sure the design panel you need is already open, then click on the element so that you see this blue box appear around it. Squarespace will automatically take you to the panel where those changes can be made. Okay, so that is how we set all of our site font styles using the site styles editor in 7.1. Don't forget to tune in next week as we tackle part two, our colors and button styling. And in the meantime, I'm super interested to hear, are you a Squarespace designer or DIYer? Is this your first website you're building? Or are you just popping in to get a feel for Squarespace's new platform? I would love to know. So please share in the comments below. And remember, getting your business up and running online is about more than just having a pretty website. So whether you are brand spanking new to Squarespace or you're a total web design pro, then you're going to want to get your hands on my Squarespace pre-design workbook. That is where I'll walk you through all the steps that I take every single time before I design a new website. That includes nailing down my exact ideal visitor profile, the most vital information that visitors will be searching for on my website, gathering inspiration and creating my design mood board in Squarespace, and properly preparing all of my site content prior to actually uploading it to the website. You can download my Squarespace pre-design workbook and checklist in the link in the description below. Want more tips and tricks for customizing your Squarespace site? Check out these videos next. And if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe.